Now, in terms of Canada as a smaller picture, okay, Vancouver uh, will begin to pick up better than last year. Last year, they really suffered. Last year, but this year, they will do better. And then, really say why I mentioned lots of mobilities in this city and lots of new businesses coming up. Okay, and so that means don't worry, we're in Toronto, we're safe. We're safe to the point that if we can prevent some American guns from coming here, we're safer. So that's something. So the advice is if it's a major, uh, probably very in the open area, lots of people, you're not sure, you better avoid it in this year. But there's more shootings in different areas, especially in the clouds. So avoid the clouds. That's Toronto. But real estate wise, in terms of Toronto, sure the areas do very well. The money centers for Toronto this year, Markham and Vaughan. These two are going to pick up. Downtown Toronto is fantastic. Okay, because these three areas are governed by the earth elements. Okay, so they will do well this year. But the downtown areas, the problem is pricing. So if you're close to universities, close to the TDCs, it's enormous. Easy to rent, but you have to look at future cost. Just a warning, that's all. So it's hard to do well. What about the small towns, such as um, Milton, Waterloo? Waterloo would do marvelous this year. A client of mine is already beginning to build three condos in Waterloo, gearing to the students based on my OK. If I say OK, the build they are going to build it. If I say no, not OK, they are not going to build it. Be a major investments, OK? So Waterloo is going to do well. The university itself also will do well because that Waterloo and Western Ontario belong to the learning center, southwest of Ontario. You see a lot of the outstanding people coming out from there. Now, what about the east side? Not that great. What happened to Pickering? <laughs> okay, even though it's a false alarm, but things like that will happen too. So real estate may not do that great in uh, Pickering area. That false alarm just suddenly wake up many people. Many people. So the real estate may suffer. So better stay away a bit. But the uh, other areas, Richmond Hill, okay, Richmond Hill, it hasn't picked up as much as Markham or Vaughan this year because it belonged to the number three controversies. Anybody heard that Richmond Hill just became a city not long ago? End of 2019. Yeah. Okay, but uh, Markham became a city earlier. because And I picked the, the incorporation day for Markham. I gave them three dates that year. One was in May, the second um, July 1, the third one in October, and they picked July 1 to be the day because they asked my opinion what day to pick to incorporate Markham as a city. So Markham as a city is really booming. Now, what about the very important thing about economy, money, and investments? Okay, if I were you, I would stay away from unreal investments, such as bitcoins. The whole world is going to paperless, not, not alone coins. Who need coins? Because uh, anybody been to China recently? No? You could remember when you go to China, you use WeChat, sick, then they charge or pay. You get pay or you pay without any cash changing hands. Anybody seen beggars in Beijing? You say you don't have money in your pocket to give the beggar? They give you a code, you can zip the code, they got paid. Beggars are high tech now in China. <laughs> okay. And this truly is not a, not a joke, it's real, I saw it. <laughs> They're more high tech. I actually had to ask the beggar how to do this. I, I, I didn't do, I, I always receive money but not pay money. <laughs> so to pay money, I forgot how to do it. Not, even you don't do it often. And the beggar can teach me how to do it while well, good teacher. <laughs> okay, so that, that's a funny thing. So in terms of economy, the one thing that really stands out is 
The three major outstanding elements for business is wood, fire, and earth. The words is metal and water. Now, metal means automobiles, airplanes. We're going to see a big round of problems with cars and airplanes. Once again, okay, recalls, new approaches, okay, arguments, cutbacks. So the auto industry is into a huge year of adjustments. Anybody notice something in a great country like Canada? We don't even produce one car that belongs to Canada. You noticed? Yeah. Isn't that silly? Okay. When France refused China on the airplanes, China said, give us two years. And China built their own passenger planes. So can, even China can do it. I don't know why Canada doesn't do it. Canada was the first country that created the fast jet plane in the world. You know that? It's called the Arrow. And then, yeah, Stephen Baker thought it's a bad idea. And then killed the project. All the engineers went to Boeing. And Canada lost the position to be number one in aerospace. How sad, because with stupid govern governments in those days. It's so sad, otherwise it would be a different country. Why always live in another kind of shadow? But anyway, so high tech would do well. That means the stocks of watch would be Apple. Sooner or later, Apple is going to come up with 5G. And also Google. And also uh, Amazon. These top three or something. Microsoft, you can go wrong with it. OK? And what about IBM traditional? They are like old men on the crutch. That's IBM. But why would IBM be surviving? Two reasons. Number one, big machines. They still need it. You cannot process the bank's data on your laptop. Forget it. Okay. Number two, service. Number three, consulting for their service. They create something for you. They hide the problem there. So you have to ask them. They fix the problem for you and charge you money. <laughs> but that's how it works. They all do that. Okay. It's not even silly. How would they have continued business otherwise? Okay, because they punch something in your system. You need them. Nobody knows these codes. Okay, so IBM will survive no matter what. Banks, big trouble. Because banks belong to the sector of metal and water. Anything to do with money will be in trouble this year. So that means top markets in Canada, unstable banks are going to further reorganize more people are going to be laid off. And people said, what's the future for jobs? You know what? There's a huge shortage of blue collar workers in Toronto alone. All my clients in construction, my clients in restaurants, they can't find people. Nobody wants to do it. Everybody wants to be white collar. Hiding in the office under AC. OK? So unfortunately, that's the case. Corporations still CYA. You know what that is? No? I wouldn't say the word. You guess what CYA is. OK. Do you know, the, I told Yen and my students before, you know why Canadian companies, so many of them in trouble? Most Canadian companies end with what word? LTD, right? Limited. Long-term disability. <laughs> or they are INC, incorporated, incapacitated. <laughs> But that's a reality, because most companies do not have vision. And these CEOs are trying to survive instead of have a vision. Their, their mindset coincides with the mindset of politicians. Why do you want people, why do people want to become an MP, MPP? Fixed salary, good benefits. How many people, how many of them really work for the people? OK. But that's the reality, too. So all this will force the country to rethink about the future, and which will make this country persist and will become a much better country. You need shocks like that, OK? Now, fire, high tech is fire. That's why high tech would do well, with one exception. I was talking to my friends uh, in Shanghai and also in Shenzhen. 
you know, this one thing really is unusual. A lot of people trying to go public, like to get uh, in the underwriting process, become public company in Shanghai. Most high tech one they call the what, conceptual company, is that the word? Failed. Pull out. Where are traditional companies, restaurants, hot pots? <laughs> okay, they boom like crazy. So something's very unusual. You would think that everything would be high tech. Yet a lot of these high tech companies actually fall down flat and they are not announced. So layman people not in this circle, they never heard of it. They don't know it. And it's real because I talk with the people directly. Okay, I, I have a fortunate way because I deal with people of all classes, all kinds of people. Traditional things can still survive. So will high tech things like Amazon, Alibaba kill the whole market? I think they are going to transform in 2020. I think the retail sector will come back, but will come back in a different mask, different from what we are used to, and all those are happening this year. Okay? Now, on the wood side, clothing. Okay? Now, the clothing industry has been low for years, but the turnover point is this year, 2020. Clothing, uh, including fashion design, strange clothing like this, and all kinds of clothing. So all those are going to do better this year. Okay, mergers. Okay, anybody visited Saks Fifth Avenue? In here, right? The old Eaton Simpsons. They are humongous in Miami. If you ever go to Miami, go to Miami Beach, you will see Saks Fifth Avenue. Okay with all these beautiful men and beautiful women in it. A lot of them, uh, what do you call that statue? <laughs> okay, so the wood side is doing well, but also creating a lot of arguments about wood. So that's going to be very interesting, double-edged short. What about earth? The most typical earth is real estate. Okay, so when Ottawa create this uh, phenomenon with a, a kind of stress test for real estate, it becomes a double-edged sword. Okay, the purpose is good, so that this bubble will be minimized. But they forgot to look at the world vision. Because the world vision is no matter what, there's no bubble. Toronto is still among the cheapest in the world. You know, a couple of months ago when I was in Sydney, and I did with Feng Shui for a house, in uh, just the inside of Sydney, and 3,000 some square feet. I compared with Toronto, I escalated it, I said it's about $2 million. I, would, I was gonna say one and a half million, I say two million. And they told me how much? Five million. What about condominium in Toronto? Below a million, most of them still. Minimum in downtown Sydney, 1.1 million for an apartment less than 1,000 square feet. Toronto is among the cheapest in the world. Why do they complain? They complained with Toronto yesterday. They failed to compare Toronto with the world. And look at San Jose. Years ago, a client of mine moved to San Jose. Before they left Toronto, they asked me, Sifu, what's your advice to me? I said, the moment you get out of the plane, buy a house. They hesitated. For three months, the house they wanted doubled. They couldn't buy it. And they regretted they should have listened to civil without so much analysis and thinking. That real estate would drop. I said, let's say in the Silicon Valley, we will never drop unless there's a major earthquake. You can't go wrong with it. So real estate would do well for long term. When you buy real estate, it's not like buying uh, stocks. It's for long term. As long as your mind is a place for, to live, you will always make money for long term. If you buy a house to flip, sooner or later you're going to lose your shit. So keep that in mind. Real estate long term can go wrong. And also real estate brings up economy. Everything needs it. Appliances, beddings, walls, furniture and ceilings, floors, and landscapes. You know how many businesses real estate is associated to? So Canada, strength, natural resources. Behind it, land. 
How many countries in the world can you go to? You buy a house and you own the land? Hong Kong, 99 years. China, 70 years. They said you go, the land go back to government. Your house go back to the government. But not here. Here you own it. So we really say, coming here, you cannot go wrong. So that's earth side. Wood, fire, earth. Okay, keep that in mind. Can't go wrong with it. Now, as the uh, diseases are concerned, the major disease this year had to do with lungs and contagious illnesses. So every, and also mental illness, three major in 2020. Lungs, contagious illnesses, and mental illnesses. Okay, be very careful. So why so many mental illnesses? Stress. People lost directions. Over the years, they struggle, struggle, struggle. They can't even retire. Be whatever they save, not enough for retirement. They have nobody to blame but themselves because they have not done proper planning. Okay? So, that's a, and that creates stress. Relation, stress. And in fact, this gentleman I met before, I did my last appointment in Miami just a, couple, a few days ago on the 12th. This gentleman is interesting. He's still a bachelor. He owns one Rolls Royce and two Ferraris and owns three buildings, three houses, each one over $10 million. And how did he make a living? He's a chiropractor. But instead of being a chiropractor, he owns half a dozen chiropractic offices, and he just managed them. He doesn't work on people. How does he make the money? He charges insurance. So there's enormous insurance claims in USA. A little touch, they say, you're hurting like hell. Go to chiropractor, get the claim, everything. Insurance company will, will pay them after all the trouble with these injury lawyers, which is getting popular here too. Okay? In my opinion, a lot of these lawyers should not be there because they say no charge unless they win. That means everybody can sue everybody. There's no cost. That's why clear chaos in USA right now. And doctors are so chicken to become doctors now. So they also create a second dilemma. The doctors put all the assets in the hands of the wife. So when he divorces nothing, the doctor would go out with just the underwear, nothing else. <laughs> because everything went to the wife. Okay? Or they got shoot, and every case would cost them quarter million dollars up. They lose the shirt anyways. So that means in the long run, a lot of doctors in the USA may come out naked. <laughs> Okay, that's a phenomenon happening big time in USA. Like my uh, client who's a plastic surgeon in, in San Francisco, average four lawsuits a year. Every size of lawsuit is getting more and more. The first one, 200,000. The second one, 250,000. That one was the crazy I ever heard. He did the surgery blessed thing for a lady, and the lady got a lawyer to sue him that the bless was a little bit too high and sue him for $250,000. Only USA. <laughs> and remember the other year, the McDonald coffee spilled on the lady and charged McDonald $200,000? <laughs> Only USA. So in Canada, become a doctor. In USA, become a lawyer. <laughs> and sue anyone. Okay. So that's about the um, things going on around the world. Now, weather pattern, I mentioned extreme weather, but so if we, one word in conclusion, what words should I give you for the advice for 2020? One word only, opportunity. Okay, so let's quickly cover a little bit of the, or any questions before I Quality. go to you. In Canada, whether you're homeless or billionaire, you're the same. The same, not in any countries. In Hong Kong, forget it. Okay, here, equality number one. Number two, freedom. Okay, you can go anywhere, and without trouble, and relatively cheap. Okay, number three. How many countries in the world have as much drinkable clean water as Canada does? None. 
Anybody been to Manitoba? 250 plus thousand lakes. Manitoba. You know why, anybody know why Canada has so many lakes and so, so much drinkable water? No idea. Because Canada was immersed under the ice during the ice age. When the ice receded, they, it left behind a lot of clear water and created tremendous number of lakes. What's the most dangerous thing going to happen to the rest of the world in the future? Water. California already suffering, not enough water, no rain. And more so in the world. Why would Africa be suffering so much? Deserts, no water. Australia too. Australia too. Okay. A lot of people don't realize Australia also has very deadly insects. They got bitten, you, you die right away. They didn't know that. Okay. So, very important. So, did I answer your question? So, percentage growth, uh, Quebec or Montreal in particular, is number one. Percentage. Price is not, just percentage. Price is still highest in Vancouver. Because Vancouver can sell your piece of garbage double the price of Toronto. <laughs> and, and the houses, in my opinion, are garbage. Don't forget, I'm an advisor to 39 builders. I know everything about a house. I go to Vancouver, look at houses, the structure, the style, completely unacceptable. The Mississauga this year would do better than last year. Last year, a lot of Mississauga friends could not sell the houses. <laughs> no market. This year is going to improve. Improve. In fact, especially in the areas of uh, Oakville. Anywhere close to water, you can go wrong. Keep that in mind. If you ever go to um, High Point in Postal area, I personally have to design three houses. The average size 20,000 square feet. Yeah. yeah. Okay, you can look at some of my masterpieces. I would say there's always a market, but always tough market. The very selected small group.